Welcome to Assemble, a print book cover, part three, the back cover. So we'll pick up where we left off with the front cover, go over to the toolbox, and this time, instead of selecting the picture box, select the rectangle tool. If it's not showing, click down and hold this particular icon, and then select the rectangle tool. Now go to the top left hand corner of the blade, click and drag all the way down to the bottom right, but not onto the front cover. I don't think that's quite accurate, so I'm going to click on the black arrow and then just click on that central activation node and snap it back right now. It's actually lined up properly. And in that, I'm going to click the swatch that's dark blue. You might not like dark blue. I'm going to use it now just for a back cover color. And let's now work on a couple of picture boxes that I'm going to put in there. One for a logo for the publishing company and one for the barcode. First, I'm going to set up some guides as to where I'd like them placed. I'm going to go up to this ruler running along the top. You can see that going horizontally across the top. Click on that once and then drag down. You see this little guideline that appears. I'm going to run it to, oh, I reckon, about there from the bottom. I'm going to place two Im images on that. Now I'm going to go over to the vertical ruler on the left, click on that and drag another guideline in. Now you can see I'm going by the ruler at the top. I'm going to go about ooh, 20 millimeters in from the left edge. And now you see the spine here where the purple line is. I don't want the text to go all the way to the spine because there's going to be a fold there. I want it at least one centimeter in. So I'm going to click again on this ruler and bring a guide up to about 138. I think that'll be about right there. Okay. Now the picture box for the logo is going to be created when I click on the rectangle frame tool or the picture box here. And I'm going to click and drag and just put a picture box there. You see the familiar X, or I hope it's now familiar. We're going to place the image by going File, then Place. Let's find the image. Ooh, there it is. The Overdog logo reversed. Let's click Open. Now you can't say much to begin with just a little bit of the top of the book. Now, this is one way to fit it that you can do. I'm going to show you another way in a minute. I'm going to go up just to the right of the top middle and click on this icon here, which is fit content proportionally, and you'll see the image fully appears now. Okay, it's not quite where I want it on the page, so I'm going to click on the white arrow, click on the image, and you'll see those brown activation nodes come into play. I'm now using the arrows and the keyboard just to move it over to the left so it's in line with that guide on the left. That's a good position. That's the position I want it in. I'm now going to click on the picture box and then click towards the bottom right hand corner of the back cover. I'm going to create a picture box there. It's not quite aligned properly so I'm going to click on the black arrow. Just move that bottom edge right onto the guideline there. Okay, now I'm ready to go file and place to put in the image. I've got a barcode prepared already. I'm going to click open to import it. Then I'm going to right click it. If you can't right click because you've got a single button mouse, perhaps you're working on a Mac computer, then just hold down control, then click and it simulates a right click. Then go up to fitting and then choose fit content proportionally and you'll see it now goes into place. Notice there's a little mini barcode to the right of the main barcode. You don't have to have this but if you're selling your book internationally it's good to have this little barcode and it says what the price is. However, I always just use the figures 90000. That stands for no fixed price so you don't actually have to fix a price around the world. It varies from country to country. I might click on the white arrow just to move the whole image itself just down to that bottom guideline. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now that's placed uh, just where I want it. Let's work on the text. So click on the type tool. Let's create a text box for a back cover blurb. And let's go and get some back cover blurb, which I've got ready on a Word file. I'm just going to highlight this and then copy it, minimize it. Then just click in the type box and I'm going to go edit and paste and it should appear. There it is. Now you notice that little red box with a cross in it's appearing. It means there's more text in there that's not showing. So I'm going to click on the black arrow, 
drag the activation node towards the bottom, let it go. Okay, the little red box has disappeared because all the text is showing. I want another little text box. I'm going to click on the type tool, click and drag all the way across. And these are for the shout lines, the quotes that people or publications might have made about your book. And I've got them ready also on that Word file. I'll highlight them and then copy and minimize. And I'll click back in the type box, go edit and paste. Give it a sec and there they are. I'll fix them up and make them look a bit better at the moment. You can see though, these are the elements that we need to complete the back cover. The last thing we're going to do is to fix up the look of the text. Let's highlight it and change it to yellow. That's going to make it look better for a start. I'm going to the swatches palette now, clicking on yellow. I'm going to make it bigger too. I'm going to click up here on the top left on the size, make it 14 points. Now, just near the bottom there, see this word service, it's hyphenated. I don't want that. I don't want hyphenation on the back cover blurb. So I'm going to go to the type menu, click on paragraph, and this little palette comes up that I've got here in the top right. And I'll just move that around a bit so you can see it all. I'll bring the uh, character one down a bit, which is underneath. Now the paragraph one has a little checkbox in the bottom left corner called hyphenate. Uncheck it and watch the hyphenation disappear. Okay, now I prefer that look, but I also want aligned left justified. Now I'm going back to the paragraph palette and the fourth option from the left is left justify. Right, that looks a bit better now. I think it looks a bit better. The one thing that I don't quite like is the spacing between paragraphs. So still on this paragraph palette, I'm going to go to this option down here, which is about increasing the space underneath the paragraphs. And watch what happens when I click it. Okay, one millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters, uh, maybe four. Okay, now even though a little bit of the text has disappeared, I'm going to fix that up by going to the black arrow, just clicking on the text box and dragging it, and it's just a little bit more, and it's all there. All right, well, that's not bad. At all, I better do something similar to the shout lines. Uh, I'll leave them at 12 point. I do want to get rid of the hyphenation. Maybe I won't put the left justified. I'll just leave them at left. You might not like that, but I'll just do it for variation's sake. I'm going to go to the swatch palette, click on paper so they're white. I will increase the spacing between the paragraph lines. I'll tell you what, this time I'll use space uh, before the paragraph. I'm just going to click and three millimeters between. Yep, that's not too bad at all. Perhaps you might like to see it without all these lines all over the place. Go down to the bottom of the toolbox and click on the very bottom icon. Click and hold and see the option preview. Click on that. Ah, now you can see it without all those lines everywhere. And it now does look a little bit more like a real book. Don't forget to click save by going file and save. And now we're ready to put on the spine, text and logo to finish off the cover. Thank you for watching and please remember to comment, like or subscribe if you'd like to view more videos about indie book publishing.